Good morning. Eclectic Crafter here. And today I'm going to show you how I use my old t-shirts. I mean, it's not that old. Just did it last year. But I'm already sick of the design and I got bigger. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it into headbands. I love headbands. I can't stand my hair in my face. I try keeping it short, but I also can't stand my ears being cold. So, <laughs> ah. Anyhow, I want to trim off the end. Now, you can do this. You can use a pair of scissors. I do recommend. These are fabric cutting scissors. See how they sit flat and fold up? And it, it's for when you're trying to cut out a pattern or something. They work fantastic for that. doesn't lift it as much as your other scissors. So you can use scissors or you can use a cutter. And to be honest, I think the roller cutter is so much easier. And you're just going to cut off the end there. Now as for the measurements, and I wrote this down so I couldn't forget because I tend to get off on a tangent. You want to figure out how wide you want your headband. I want my headband only two inches wide. So now I will double that. And then I will add a half inch because I'm doing quarter inch seams. If you prefer to do bigger seams, then you're going to take the width of your headband, finished headband that you want, plus the seam, and then times two. Because I'm going to have the width of my headband and the seam to hold the sides together. And then on the other side is the seam and the width of the headband again. So for mine, I do quarter inch seams and I want a two inch headband. I'm going to go four and a half inches. And it's awkward with this. I've got light and all this stuff. So let me twirl this around. Usually I just step to the other side. I am extremely right-handed. I can't do that flipping it back and forth. And I, I don't do so well with these. I, sometimes it works out for me. I haven't had my coffee yet this morning. So I'm not going to trust my brain that much. Four and a half inches. I'm not worried about the width at this point in time, but now this will probably make two. To get the length for the, uh, the radius of your head, measure from your nape, the bottom of the hairline at the neck, up around your by the forehead, the front of your hairline back down that is the correct measurement of your head for your headband then you're going to subtract three inches but then <laughs> you're going to add double your seam I know that sounds weird but it's the best way to figure it so my head is on the larger side. Throw that away. So I need 20 inches. I have a 23 inch head minus the three plus a half an inch because I'm doing quarter inch seams. I'm sorry, I keep hesitating here. I really should go and have my coffee. So I'm going to cut it 20 and a half inches. And you can't see it because I've got the camera so close. But this board has the measurements on it. So I will get two out of this. Like I said, it's no longer fitting me. My When your belly hangs over the table, <laughs> you know there's a problem. I started right, my son bought a stationary bike and I got on it last night. Problem is, is wow, does it aggravate. 
things for me. So I was in pain all night. I, I haven't slept a great deal. And now I've got two headbands. And when I'm done, I will turn them in and out. Now, knit does have a right and a wrong side. And when you get down to it, it's all on what you like, what your eye prefers. But on a knit shirt, if you look at a knit sweater, you'll see the knit side, and then on the inside is the pearl side, the bumpy side. It's the same thing on a t-shirt. This is the knit side. This is the pearl side. So I will sew it together in a long tube, right like that, and then I'll turn it out. And I can get numerous headbands out of this, which works because my I'll pull them off and set them down. <laughs> and my cat runs off with them. He'll he'll outgrow that eventually. He's not even a year old yet. It's funny, he gets hold of my yarn and he you'll see him walking through the house and it's his kill. You know how they'll have their head up and their ears pointed and I'm so proud of myself. I killed it. He killed that yarn. All right. We'll be back. I'm changing out my needle. I've already taken out the old one. I had worked on a quilt. And it needs a fresh needle after that, for sure. Plus, I needed a smaller needle. I buy this same needle in multiple sizes. This is an 80-12 organ needle. I use it for everything. My embroidery machine. It is a flatbed embroidery machine. Not a free arm. My eyes are not very good. My fingers are not very good. So I bought a couple of these. And... See, I can't even see if I've got it in straight. Let me get it out here. Alright. So, the flat side of the needle goes to the back on my machine. Goes to the back on this. The other side is actually a needle threader. Um, a dime works in my screw on this machine. Something I learned from my mother a long time ago, my stepmom. Keep a dime handy. <laughs> did a digging through the drawer. I just do that. Now, so because I it can be forgetful at times, and I jump from craft to craft, I'll take my packet of needles and I put it up on top of my machine where the thread goes, it dips. I can do it without bouncing you too much I'll show you on the top here there's uh, enough room for the thread and the packet of needles and that way if I forget what I've got in it all I have to do is check that and normally if I'm changing my needle out to another size I go ahead and throw it away I get like a hundred needles for I think they cost me twelve dollars the last time I bought them but I'm not saying that's still the same price. Things have really gone up. Oh, I've had a heck of a time getting this located to where you can see my sewing bed. Okay, it's just a matter of sewing down the side. If you have a serger, this works great. Um, didn't feel like getting out my serger. I don't have room to keep it up all the time. So I thought, well, I'll just use this machine. I can do a straight stitch. It doesn't have to be surged. Why are you not... Huh. It never binds up. I'm surprised about that. All right. And I'm going to do a quarter inch, and I happen to know that if I leave my cent my needle centered where on this foot, that little plastic piece right there is a quarter inch. Simply from 
piecing quilts so many times over the years. I'm being very particular. If it's something you're going to stick on your head, it doesn't matter. Just want to turn it inside out. Let me just get that turned inside out. Snip off the really long thread hanging out. <laughs> get it in the center. On each end, oh, the barometric pressure is really messing with me today. I can't hardly stand the pain in my head. All right, now what I do because I don't like the wide width in the back at my nape. I take it and I put a little pleat in it and then I just tack this pleat down. And it's funny because I always reach here and it's an automatic drop. <laughs> I can't help it. For one thing, when you switch from machine to machine all the time, different machines do different things. And I'm going to put another one in this side. Why did... It's testing me. wants to see how far it can push me. And then we will put a little pleat in this one. I don't even make sure they're the same size. If you want, just compare them. If it needs a little more, put a little more. When all is said and done, it's going in the back of your head, under your hair, and it's not going to be noticeable. This is why I really do love using the serger for it. This takes seconds on a serger. I pop out half a dozen of them. And now we're going to just sew these two ends together. Now you want to make sure that this seam is on the same side as this seam. See? I don't put a twist in it. This is not a twisted one. And make sure you don't get that finger up under that needle. If it's giving you a hard time, grab something to kind of push. It is a lot of fabric in a lump and even a strong machine like this one can have a hard time. So I'm going to go back over it with a zigzag stitch. Turn all your 
your threads close. It is so dark outside because of the weather moving in. <laughs> it's foggy. It's It thinks it's spring and it's still winter. It's just crazy weather. Yesterday was... I think a high of 45. Today it's supposed to get up to 53. This is Tuesday. Friday it's supposed to be... Uh, low 30s, high 20s, and snowing. This is just the way it is. <laughs> People say, oh, the weather's gone crazy. As far as I can tell, it's always been this way. I'm 61 years old, and I'm telling you... <laughs> It's always been crazy. First year we were married, there was a snowstorm late March. And I had to plow through three-foot drifts to get to work. I managed to get there. I had this old car I called Patches because it had all these different colors of primer all over it. It was a joke. But... It ran, and it plowed right through those drifts, and I managed to get to work just to find out they'd called me in early because the woman that worked the day shift wanted to leave early. <laughs> yeah. Could have waited till the roads were cleared. All right, so... Here's my headband. And here's my headband, all finished. See, I like this width, not too wide. I always trap it on my ears. It's just the way I am. If you like them behind, then you put it behind. I happen to like it over my ears. Helps keep them warm, especially in the winter. In the summer, I do pop it behind, but in the winter, I cover them up. Thank you so much. <laughs> you get from here up. If you ever watched Home Improvement, you'll get the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me, and uh, please come back and join me again. Like and subscribe, if you will. Bye-bye.